Hey, yo, what's up, what's up, guys? Zaid here with another episode of Zaid's Experience. It's been a while since I, my last carnivore update. Today, as of today, actually, it's day 75 of my carnivore diet, and things have been going awesome in regards to the diet. But there's been a couple of changes, so stick around and I'll let you guys know. that note guys before we start please go ahead and push that subscribe button if you guys haven't already done so it really helps me out it really helps out the channel and make sure to press that little bell that way you guys get notified every time I come up with a video such as this but now on with the video so first of all let me start off with the whole carnivore diet thing it's day 75 as of today that I'm doing this video and everything's been going great something that has been happening again is my fat loss just stopped it really just stopped I know a lot of people start losing a lot of weight and I know on the most part a lot of people start to just you know put on crazy amounts of mass for me I've been putting on a lot of muscle mass really fast by just doing the exercises that the doctor gave me for my shoulders and for my hip and I'll let you guys know about that right now so I've been putting on mass but I haven't been able to lose the pounds as I was at the beginning of the diet so what ended up happening was I went to the doctor and I got some blood drawn about a week ago and they did the blood work and everything and the only thing that came out bad, uh, on, well not bad but a little bit high was my cholesterol. Go figure, same problem all carnivores have, just their cholesterol is a little bit high and it really even wasn't that high even though I haven't been exercising like crazy. You guys know I love running, you guys know I love exercising, but at the moment we just can't because of all this. And I would have loved doing this 75, at least 90 days of carnivore uh, while exercising. That would have been something completely different. But I have another challenge coming up right after these 90 days. I'm really looking forward to it and I'll explain it to you guys a little bit more once we get to that. But essentially after these 90 days are over, I have something else coming, so stick around for that guys. But yeah, one of the main things is the shoulder thing, uh, we still haven't been able to resolve it and it's due to insurance problems. So um, my company has been great. They've been super awesome and I won't give too much details about that, but they are kick ass. They are the best company that I could have gone with. But <laughs> the insurance company hasn't been as proactive about this whole situation. Um, workers comp, go figure. But I'll leave it at that and I'll just say that progress is being made slowly but surely and hopefully we get this solved in the near future. But for right now my shoulders are still handicapped and as of very recently a flare up of my hip came up and this is a problem that I've had before. Remember I told you that I had some knee problems, some hip problems back about two, three years ago well that kind of flared up again and so even the running is out of the question but that's recovering a lot faster and that should get out of the way pretty soon and I kind of know how to tackle all that but that's been hindering my performance as well but all injuries aside um, everything's been going great with the carnivore diet just all meat rarely we get any chicken we've added a lot more pork and that's been really helping and I'll show you guys in a second right now how all that pork looks it's amazing it looks great and it tastes even better but yeah guys can't complain about my diet everything's been going great I can't wait to show you guys the results of this diet and I have another thing to talk about um, once the 90 days are over because I'm pretty sure you guys will be impressed with some stuff but you guys will also question some other stuff so another thing that happened was I ended up with a cat I know cat guy right well no this cat has been my cat for the past eight years he was just at my mom's house for about four years because I couldn't move him over here into my apartment they didn't let cats in here but he's finally here with me finally brought him home and I'm kind of super happy his name is Willie I love this little guy to death um, and he's been coping really well with the apartment if you guys have any suggestions for a fully indoor cat um, like anything like for playing around and stuff um, please leave him down there I'm having some trouble with him just kind of like he's becoming extremely lazy he was an outdoor cat I moved him inside he's loving it so far but I want him to do a little bit more exercise right Willie say hi Willie Weepy. Weepy. yeah you're awesome located behind you 
They don't mind their dog candy. Also, if you guys find any cat scratchers or any cat, like, clawy things, that way he doesn't scratch the sofa, please let me know. Leave it down in the comment sections, guys. I would really appreciate it. But in case he wants to do that again, I have his arch nemesis right there. Good old Mr. Bakum. Ha 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 ha. So this is one of the main things that I've changed uh, in order to get my half a pig. I had to buy another separate freezer just like this. It was like 150 bucks at Best Buy, but it has a pretty good storage capability and it's pretty easy to defrost in comparison to most. So if you guys are looking to get one of these, it's Insignia. So it's pretty awesome. I've, I've really enjoyed it. It's super quiet. I, I haven't even noticed it and fits easily into the apartment. It has a really good temperature regulator, so you can see right there, the light is on, everything's good, and if you want to defrost it, like I said, um, right there you can see, um, it's really easy, you just take that off and it defrosts while it's outside, and it's super easy, super light, super movable, there's no problems with it at all. So let me show you what I got in here. So, I've already taken off quite a bit of meat surprisingly i as you guys know as carnivores we eat a lot more meat than the average folk so there is some regular meat that i bought in here but a very small amount i've already we would have gotten this right from the beginning um this would have been filled up to the top with just pork literally the entire half pork fit in here perfectly so this is pork skin it's pretty awesome in case i want to make chicharrones or something like that pork skin pork pork rinds, I think that's what they call them here. <laughs> In Mexico, we call them chicharrones. These, these are the skins. They're awesome. And they, again, everything got vacuum sealed when I got my half a pig. That way it lasts a little bit longer. And with this freezer, it's awesome. I also got the copa ribs here. They super cool. And I've told you guys before, I buy usually, I like to buy in bulk. So, this right here, you know, I tell you guys, sometimes it's hard to get some good quality meat, but a good example of me, you know, just buying in bulk, I was able to get these porterhouse steaks when they were four, I believe, 48 a pound at Vons. I'm not paid by these guys or anything. I'm, you know, I mean, sometimes they just have really good specials, especially if you're trying to live off of this carnivore diet and you're like a student or something, it can get really expensive or it can get really daunting if you don't know where to get this little bits and pieces of information, you know? But special hunting is definitely gonna be your ally in this. And that's a good example of that. I think these are some New York strips as well. When they were 477 a pound, again, I just jumped on that sale and got quite a bit. One, two, three, you know, like, that's that's what I do guys. It, it really is the only way to survive in this Ooh, We also did a bunch of bacon this bacon is bomb guys. It's it is awesome They packaged it into again these vacuum sealed bags Which I think are great and they made it in like the perfect amount that way I don't have to unfreeze the entire thing. I just have to unfreeze a portion of it Oh, a good portion of this went to sausages and they were all made there no nitrates none of that crap that they put on the on the usual ones um we got a couple different varieties they made these creole style ones that are just awesome i really don't know what the heck they have on them but i am perfectly okay with them some hot italian ones you know pig's feet we also got a bunch of pig's feet well four and so what ended up happening is the bones from my particular pig ended up going bad because they took a while to cut it up because um, we just couldn't coordinate a date for me to pick it up. So what these guys ended up doing is they said, you know what, we're going to give you a couple of, uh, what are you, what were you going to do with the bones? And I told them, I'm just going to make some bone broth. And so they were nice enough to give me three tubs of bone broth instead, which is pretty awesome. I tried it before, so I got all three tubs of the bone broth ready to go. I've already eaten several of the chops that you guys saw in the video. Um, I ate those ribeyes and I ate those porterhouse steaks, all of them. Um, and mostly I cooked one for my dad, I cooked one for my family, you know, I, I let them try out the pig and they were fascinated. They've never tried something like that as well. Oh, and this is something I've never seen before that um, that came out of, um, these are ham hocks. Ham hocks, I think I'm saying it right. But they smoked them out for me. so. 
these taste pretty awesome from what I hear. I haven't tried them out at all, so if you guys have any recommendations on how to make these, um, please let me know in the comment section down below. I'm really interested in seeing how I can use these. Have no clue. Apparently, a lot of people from the south tend to use them like um, maybe in, in you know in eggs or something like that, some kind of stir fry kind of thing. Um, they'll just add little bits and pieces of this, and since it's smoked, it's already flavored. So I'm I'm really interested in trying this out and see how seeing how it tastes. A bunch of bacon, a bunch of bacon. Oh my cat food! I give him little bits of this stuff and I give him meat. I have some meat here prepared for him because his hair was falling off at the beginning and I started to give him just red meat. Go figure, feeding your cat meat as well also helps him out. It's just red meat that I cut up for him yesterday. I'm gonna give it to him today. So far he hasn't even bat an eye. <laughs> he hasn't asked for anything, but he will eventually. I know him, I know my kitty. The pork secreto. Secreto, secreto, not sure how it's pronounced. And this is what's left of the pork butt. Uh, I'll show you guys right now a really quick clip of what happened with the other half of the pork butt. So basically what ended up happening to the other half of the pork butt was we went to TJ, it was my dad's birthday. And what I ended up doing was me and my brother, we ended up having like this barbecue for in honor of his birthday. And he, I believe turned 54, if I'm not mistaken. <laughs> we went and we did, uh, Pulled pork. My brother rocks at using the barbecue grill. I can use a barbecue to save my life, but you give me a pan, you give me a skillet, a cast iron pan, and an oven, and uh, I can rock that no problem. But my brother is a pro when it comes to the whole barbecue game. So he smoked the pork butt for about 12 hours, I believe, 12, 14 hours or so. Along with that, we also did some short ribs and both of them were just awesome. They were phenomenal. Once we took them apart, they were, they were badass. There's no other way of explaining it. Um, they were just awesome. Okay, Amarre? No, como no? And quite frankly, after cooking this pork, I don't think I've ever had pork that tastes like this. The pork doesn't really taste like pork. I won't say it tastes like chicken, but it definitely doesn't have that pork flavor that is just very pungent and like really in your face that people kind of like usually steer away from pork because of that. But I think that this pork is super mild tasting and it, it's just a really nice, refreshing pork taste. Like it, it, I've never eaten this much pork in my life and been so okay with it. And it's not because, ooh, pork is bad for you or anything like that, no. Pork is actually red meat, but I've always had a problem with pork tasting too porky. And <laughs> if that's thin porky, uh, but I've always definitely had a problem with it. But now um, with this heritage pork that I got from my local butcher, I can definitely say that I, I can't look at pork the same way. I mean, I'm, I think I'm <laughs> actually, I'm never going back to just regular pork. I think I'm going to keep on getting this kind of heritage pork. And now that I've tried this pork, I can definitely taste the difference in quality when I try other pieces of pork. So it's one of those things that opens your eyes quite a bit. And if you guys haven't checked out that video, I'll go ahead and leave a link to both of the parts. I had to separate the videos into two parts, mainly because it was 30 minutes, but I am coming out with the full version. That way, if you guys just wanna binge on the entire 30 minutes on how the entire thing was chopped down, how, how my half a pig was chopped down, 
you can definitely check that out as well. But I'll leave cards up here for you guys. Also, don't forget guys, if you guys live around here in San Diego, definitely go and visit the Hardin Trotter. They have some really awesome meat. I don't get paid by them. I didn't get any free products. I did not get sponsored by them, nothing at all. They just have a really amazing um, product and I think it's well worth spreading the word. And that's why I'm putting it through this channel. That's why I took the time to make that 30 minute video and show it to you guys. So hopefully you guys get some useful information out of that and start buying maybe a little bit higher quality meat if possible. I know it can get a little bit expensive and a little bit hefty on the bat, on the pocket, but if you have the choice every now and then, it's actually a good way to treat yourself, especially for just being carnivore all the time. I know it can get a little hard, especially going out with your family and that kind of thing, and maybe you want a couple of sweets over there and you don't want to break the diet. I think treating yourself to a really nice piece of meat is a great way to do it as a cheat kind of meal if you guys really don't want to break it so thanks for watching another episode guys you guys know the deal please go ahead comment like and subscribe you guys know what's up push that notification bell if you guys haven't already done so that way you guys get notified every time i come up with a video such as this there's a lot of you guys out there that haven't subscribed that are watching so help out but in any case guys zay out Peace.